formerly known as the Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Controlled Application Act, H.R. 7521 claims to protect you from foreign spying and influence. I took a look at the legislation. It seems more like a, a political stunt than something designed to protect the American people. Let's start with the title. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? The Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Controlled Application Act. Good. Except this bill does not protect you from foreign adversary controlled applications. In fact, from the legislation itself, we read, It shall be unlawful for an entity to distribute, maintain, or update, or enable the distribution, maintenance, or updating of a foreign adversary controlled application by carrying out within the land and maritime borders of the United States any of the following. Providing services to distribute, maintain, or update such foreign adversary controlled application, including any source code of such application, by means of a marketplace, including an online mobile application store, through which users within the land or maritime borders of the United States may access, maintain, or update such application. Providing internet hosting services to enable the distribution, maintenance, or updating of such foreign adversary controlled application for users within the land and maritime borders of the United States. Now, this bill, should it become law, would make it unlawful to host one of these applications on an application marketplace or store, but only within the United States. It does not prohibit anyone from having the application or from using it. I don't know if the members of Congress realize this, but the internet is international. So while this bill would make it unlawful for Apple or Google to host TikTok on their US-based marketplaces, it does not prevent them from hosting it on their foreign ones, which I suppose means they could list the app on their stores, but the link to download or update the app would go to a server in a foreign country. The other option would be for the user to simply get a VPN that would direct their traffic to a foreign country, then search their app store for TikTok. In either case, the people will still have and be able to update the app. Since this law only prohibits hosting the applications, TikTok would simply have to redirect TikTok.com to a server in a foreign country, and their website would still work. So this bill would have little impact on a foreign adversary either collecting data on or influencing Americans. Well, then there's the ownership requirement for an app to be controlled by a foreign adversary. The term controlled by a foreign adversary means with respect to a covered company or other entity that such company or other entity is a foreign person that is domiciled in, is headquartered in, has its principal place of business in, or is organized under the laws of a foreign adversary country, an entity with respect to which a foreign person or combination of foreign persons described in subparagraph A directly or indirectly own at least a 20% stake or a person subject to the direction or control of a foreign person or entity described in subparagraph A or B. All a person or company would have to do is own less than 20% of the app to get around this. But as a stakeholder, would they not still have access to all the data? Could they not influence the development of an algorithm used to influence their audience? After all, the United States doesn't own Twitter or Facebook, but they've been able to influence both companies and impact both elections and the response to COVID. At that point, there's the question of, well, what is a foreign adversary country? The term foreign adversary country means a country specified in Section 4872D2 of Title 10 United States Code. What countries are specified in 10 U.S.C. 4728D2? The term covered nation means the Democratic People's Republic of North Korea, the People's Republic of China, the Russian Federation, and the Islamic Republic of Iran. Then there's a the question of what companies are covered by this bill. The term covered company means an entity that operates directly or indirectly, including through a parent company, subsidiary, or affiliate, a website, desktop application, mobile application, or augmented or immersive technology application that permits a user to create an account or profile to generate, share, and view text, images, videos, real-time communication, or similar content, has more than 1 million monthly active users with respect to at least two of the three months preceding the date on which a relevant determination of the president is made pursuant to paragraph 3b, enables one or more users to generate or distribute content that can be viewed by other users of the website, desktop application, mobile application, 
or augmented or immersive technology application and enables one or more users to view content generated by other users of the website, desktop application, mobile application, or augmented or immersive technology application. Now, while the Constitution study doesn't have a million monthly active users yet, I would like to one day. Users can create accounts, and one day I would like them to share information with other users. Does that make the Constitution study a covered company? This bill would require us to be 20% owned by a citizen of one of these foreign adversary countries. And we all know that Congress would never slip in an amendment to some huge omnibus bill to change those requirements, would they? While there are plenty of issues with this legislation, we haven't even covered the question of constitutionality.